Um, I couldn't believe it. I actually double checked. I did the math. Um, I thought maybe it was a mistake, a typo. It's not. Natalie Holloway would be 36 years old today. 36. Back in 2005, you'll remember, I know you will. Uh, she vanished without a trace in Aruba. It was the last day of her senior trip, high school senior trip, and her roommates couldn't find her in the hotel. Uh, last seen the night before at Senior Frogs, leaving with Joran van der Sloot, Dutch son of a judge, son of a couple of other things too. Um, but even though they investigated him, and who knows whether his dad was able to pull any strings uh, in Aruba, I don't know. Never got charged. And then he did some really awful things, uh, twisted things actually. Said to Natalie's mom, if you pay me a big, huge sum of money, um, I will lead you to her body. And that got him in trouble, actually in a lot of trouble. Um, but before he could get in the trouble for that, he actually split to Peru where he ended up murdering another young woman in his hotel room on the anniversary of Natalie Holloway's disappearance. I don't make these things up. Five year anniversary, he murders Stephanie Flores and then he goes down for it in Peru and he's been serving a prison sentence in Peru ever since. Unbelievable. But now, as it turns out, Peru wants to send him back to us uh, on a little visit, a visit to be tried on extortion and fraud charges for the $25,000 that he asked the Holloways to pay him to lead to her body, which of course he never did. Extortion and fraud charges here in the US. I wonder how long that could hold him because Peru could let him out by around 2038, 2045, something like that when he's around 50. So I wanna bring in Susan Filan. Uh, she's a former prosecutor and legal analyst and she's got way better answers to this stuff than I do. Hello, old friend. Uh, first question, I don't get this. I, I honestly don't get it because if he's still got, you know, uh, quite a long time to serve in Peru. Why are they adjudicating this now in the U.S.? Because you got a sentence kind of proximate to the conviction if he gets convicted. And won't that just serve out concurrently? Well, there's an extradition treaty with Peru that the U.S. Uh, signed. And that treaty says that basically if you make a request for extradition and your request satisfies the criteria of the treaty, the country, in this case Peru, would honor that request if certain conditions are met. First, a judge has to say yes, and then a diplomat has to say yes. And both of those things happen in this case. I don't think it's that odd because Peru has said you have to return him. Uh, he's not going to serve out his sentence in the U.S. He's going to be tried and potentially convicted. Then he goes back to Peru. Then he comes back to the U.S to serve out his sentence. So that actually extends his time behind bars. Okay, not well, that's that was my question. So they can say, here's your sentence, and it will begin once you go finish what you started in Peru. Once you, like 2045 or 2038, it's a little convoluted because of some drug charges down there, but once you finish that, then you begin the sentence here. Is that correct? Yes, that's what I believe is correct. Wow. Now, the other thing is that um, they, can hold him in the U.S. until the proceedings are concluded, which could be years and years and years of appeals. Um, but he's also going to fight the extradition in Peru. I think he'll lose it, but he's going to fight it. Yeah, good luck with that. And by the way, I'm sure everybody would prefer that he just serve in Peru where it's really awful. My friend Jean Casares uh, reported and went down there and saw the prison and said it was rat infested. There was dripping water everywhere, freezing cold. It is, it's a torture chamber in itself. And from what I understand, not a lot of people survive their 25 year sentences, uh, which are maxed down there. Okay, next question. Um, <laughs> how long could he actually get for extortion and fraud charges in the U.S. And, and please tell me it's really, really long. <laughs> oh, Ashley, I didn't look that up. I can't tell you off the top of my head. And there's also criteria that would go into that depending on the amount of money that he stole, what his guidelines would be on a grid. I don't have an answer for you, sorry. So one thing I will, because that is really mean to test you on that. Um, I know for a fact that the, you know, the, the feds were involved in the sting. So they have all the evidence. They were, they were part of it all. It's not, you know, they don't have to dig it up now. Um, and it's federal. So whatever he gets, you serve all of it for the most part. You don't get good time, do you? That's right. You serve pretty much day for day. I mean, he's yeah. toast in two Korea, years. Are we talking in the US. Oh, I think we're talking yeah. much longer than two. I would say 10 to 15 if I had to guess. 
Well, thank you for that. That'll take him to around 65 years old by my um, estimates. Uh, Susan Filan, thank you for this. It's always good to see you. When we start uh, learning more, I hope you'll come back and, and then really find that federal statute because I, I really want to know how long uh, he ends up getting locked up for because that evidence is good. You bet. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.